tonight's uh, topic is as a man thinketh. Hallelujah. As a man thinketh. If you go to Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7, the writer of Proverbs says this, For as a man thinks within himself, so he is. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, do you know your personality? Your personality is here in your mind. Those who are looking at you, is just they are just seeing the external activities that result out of your thinking. Yeah, am I right? So as a man thinketh, so he is. It was written in BC, before Christ, such a great divine revelation. Think about it. So whatever is your thought pattern, that, that becomes your personality. That becomes your life. Think about it. Not just your personality. That is how you are going to lead your life. One day when Jesus spoke to me, I gave my life to Jesus. Okay? That changed my thoughts. Changed my direction. So that is how I am led in my life now. Huh? After 30 years, more than 30 years, I am living a life according to what I think. That Jesus is my Lord and my God and my Creator and my Savior. Hallelujah. Likewise, it is same to you. My dear brothers, as a man thinketh, so he is. As your child thinketh, so they will be. Am I right? Why are we sending our children to the best schools possible? Because their thoughts should be framed and constructed in such a way so that they come up in their lives and live a proper life. Right? Have you seen kids getting distracted and getting into drugs and other stuff? Their thoughts are broken. They will become useless people over a period of time. It, they become a great burden upon the society, upon the police department, upon the government, upon everyone. Am I right? Because they lost their power. Their mind is lost because of the drugs. That is why some of the nations give death penalty to the drug smugglers. Do you understand? Why? Because they are ruining their generation, their country people. So we have to protect our mind. Am I right? Yeah? Jesus said in chapter 6, how are we going as a Christian? What, what is God's instruction? Je Jesus said in John chapter 6 verse 63, Jesus himself said, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and are life. My dear brothers and sisters, how many times you have read this verse, but did you get any clue of what it means? Do you know in what circumstance Jesus said these things? When Jesus was preaching God's word very powerfully and he was healing the sick, people got attracted. Okay, when he was a very dynamic preacher, when he was a dynamic healer, a deliverer, with his, just looking at a person, the evil spirits are leaving. Just when he points out a person, that evil spirit is leaving. Okay, so people got attracted. Jesus was a very, very attractive person, spiritually as well. So, thousands of people started following Jesus. And some of those thousands, a few hundred, came to Jesus and said, We also want to be like you. Can you train us? And they became disciples. Do you understand? There were 12 disciples. Good. Jesus picked them up. Yeah? So, you know about that. But there were hundreds of of other people, the 70, the second group was 70 people, 70 disciples. And there were other 500 people also. And you can see hundreds of other people in Kapernaum, where the headquarters of Jesus' ministry was. He was mostly centered under uh, around Kapernaum, the, the town of Kapernaum. So hundreds of disciples were there with Jesus. But a time came. When Jesus started preaching the word of God in, in depth, okay? When you are giving a flashy message, oh, encouraging message, everyone will be there. When you are always healing people, everyone will be there. But when you start giving a very tough, challenging message of purity, holiness, sanctity, eh? forgiving others, eh? no gossips, all these truths will be very, very bitter even to the core group. Of Jesus. So, hundreds of disciples of Jesus, direct disciples, left him. Think about it. Think about it. 
and jesus said it is the spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing the words that i have spoken to you are spirit and are life hallelujah what does it mean now i have given the context okay when the hundreds of when hundreds of disciples were leaving jesus he turned to the 12 disciples peter james john andrew philip thomas ha huh? judas everyone and he turned to them and asked are you also going to leave me neengalum enna vittu poga manadha irukkireergala are you also going to desert me and leave and immediately peter said lord how can we live leave you because you have the purest word directly from the father when we hear the word of god it gives us so much of power and then jesus appreciated peter and then he said it is a spirit who gives life the flesh profits nothing those who are following jesus in their flesh for their fleshly needs for their worldly needs to get a job to get money to make money out of ministry cannot sustain in ministry please please understand there are hundreds of such people in christendom who are just following jesus for their fleshly needs for their own prestige for their own societal ha huh? dignity standard prestige all these things they also want to call themselves a so and so pastor apostle prophet teacher do you understand they want to make money there are another group of people who want to make money out of ministry they will not sustain in god's true ministry please understand that the flesh profiteth nothing useless the flesh is useless so god jesus wants to inspire you in your spirit am i right the god of all spirits god of all spirits we are worshiping the god of all spirits the bible says am i right the supreme being father god we are worshiping the spirit the spirit the holy spirit brings life into you my dear brothers and sisters the flesh has nothing to offer in the spiritual life the flesh the mamsamanadu is ready to pull you down and make you a sinner do you understand just for the 70 or 80 years you have to live in this flesh that's all it's a vessel and jesus is ready to heal your the vessel the flesh no doubt but don't depend on the flesh you are a spirit being the holy spirit when it comes upon you when he comes upon you he will invoke the holiness the spirit will be inspired and you will come to life so when i when i got saved when you were saved the moment you got saved when you accepted jesus christ suddenly did a glow come upon you did you become an angel no what is the transformation spirit your inner man had a glow had an identity in christ your physical being stayed like that over a period of time when you lived in holiness yes your face will also becomes bright ha huh? there is a glow of holiness because your thoughts are changed you are living a holy life so there is a brightness that comes from within not from the makeup or fair and lovely do you understand that is superficial but there is an inner light which makes my eyes also bright my my face also is glowing because of the inner holiness the spirit brings life but the flesh matters nothing you understand yeah the words i have been teaching you my disciples it's not just words it's just it's just not aramaic don't think it is an aramaic dictionary or an encyclopedia for you to write or some articles to write no the words i'm speaking in aramaic my dear brother peter my dear brother james john it's not just a language not just a human language what it is it is spirit and life it has a format that format is not aramaic it is not tamil it is not telugu it is not even english it is not kjv it is not niv it is not nlt the word of god is not aramaic it is spirit and in truth that is why we have to proclaim it 
that is why even if you have even if you purchase 100 bibles and keep it uh, in your kitchen and in your living room you are not going to change the word of god has to be preached and accepted in spirit and in truth and it will bring life it will bring true eternal life do you understand Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 and 13 it says my dear brothers and sisters it defines the power of God's word Hebrew 4 12 and 13 for the word of God is living and active hallelujah it is not Aramaic it is God's word breathed by God it is living because it has the breath of Jesus Christ in it hallelujah and it is active it is not passive it will do something it is a missile with the ammunition content. If I trigger it upon you, it will, it will come and smash you. It is active. It is an active ammunition. It has to do something. If it is not doing something, it is not activated. It is alive and moving, sharper than a double-edged sword. Hallelujah. In those days, 2000 years back, sword was the major weapon. Right? Not uh, missiles. Missiles were came just uh, 100 years back or whatever. Okay. But it was a sword. And it pierces and divides not your flesh. But your soul and your spirit. Your inner man. That's what Jesus was saying in John 6 and 63 as well. The spirit wants to come and do something within you. The flesh matters nothing. So your soul and your spirit is the greatest problem area. Where God wants to dwell and deal with it. It's not the flesh. It's about the soul and the spirit. Your inner man has to be touched by God. And then comes the outcome that, that will come, reflect in your life. It also touches the joints and the marrow. It is able to judge the thoughts. It goes into your soul and spirit, divides it and also comes up and uh, judges your thoughts. And the will of the heart it in your intentions. One day, God will judge me and you, not just for the activities that you did, but for my intentions as well. If I am doing the ministry with the wrong intention, my intention will be judged. Not just, oh, he did so, so, so many activities. He was preaching there. He went to this place. He went to that church. You, all activities. My intention Will be judged. Your intention will be judged. As a man thinketh, so is he. So it is not only your thoughts, your thinking is being altered, manipulated by the people around you. You should understand that. Your own father, your own mother, your own uh, sibling will be controlling your thoughts. Am I right? Your own family members will be controlling your thoughts. That they are great influences upon your life. Human beings around you are great influences upon your life. Why am I encouraging you to look into the word of God, read the chapters and underline it so that you will give your attention and underline God's word in your life. Let your spirit underline God's word, not a man's word around you, not a woman's word around you. Not only that, evil spirits, you should understand, are speaking to people in, your, in their mind, pushing them, pushing them, pushing them to a corner, giving negative thoughts, giving evil thoughts, giving suicidal thoughts. Just think, some people, they cannot, they are not very, very weak, their mind and their heart, they cannot take a bold decision, but they are bold enough to commit suicide. Have you thought about it? It's not an easy act to commit suicide. It's the most boldest, if that is the right word, it is the most boldest way to go and hang yourself or jump into the uh, into, a, uh, into a well or somewhere. So, it is not their ability. It is an evil spirit pushing them to the corner and saying, you have to commit this. This is the only way to escape. Do you understand? So, evil spirits are also speaking to human mind. You should understand the evil spirit is also inspiring. He, the evil spirits have their own agents to do the evil ministry in this world. You understand? You should protect your mind. 
you should protect your mind in and paul says in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 12 and 14 now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who's from god the holy spirit who's who's from god so that we may know the things freely given to us by god things are freely given ilavasamai kodukapattugirathu the spirit comes from the from god himself the holy spirit but a natural man the problem with man is in the 14th verse it says but a natural man does not accept the things of the spirit of god see the problem the problem statement is mentioned in the scriptures what is the problem of man the human being doesn't want to hear listen the spirit of god what what the spirit of god say he considers god's word and the spirit of god's sayings as foolishness for they are foolishness to him and he cannot understand them see it is first of all foolish to him then he cannot understand because they are spiritually appraised they are valued by the spirit do you understand so a common natural man will have a struggle here the bible says that is why we are here to teach you the word of god do you understand it is not so easy to understand god's purest word and his intentions because it comes from the most supreme being right and you need a bible teacher or a man of god who skilled and who listens to the holy spirit to teach you am i right that is why pastors are given that is why men of god stand before you preaching the word of god so that valuable input has to be your input in your life my dear brothers and sisters one thing is through the men of god the other thing is the bible says the holy spirit has, is already upon you you will be taught by the holy spirit you will be taught by the holy spirit when the word of god and the holy spirit when you listen to him your life will start moving in the right direction hmm? the spirit of god and the and the word of god will always push you push you it will not allow you to stand there it will push you and and gently push you sometimes violently move you to the right direction if you are very lazy god will slap you because peter was slapped by the angel of god in the prison huh? and dragged out of the prison and left in the streets you understand don't sleep peter this is not the time for sleeping because there are believers crying for your rescue you cannot be sleeping so god spirit and his angels will position you propel you in god's divine destiny and direction why things are not moving in your life in the right direction because the word of god and the spirit of god has to be allowed into your soul and your spirit in the right intensity you understand the spirit of god the man, human spirit is always sluggish and will pull you down so the word of god and the holy spirit has to be allowed in a certain intensity so that you will start moving in god's destiny but what is happening today you know i think everyone will have laptops at home ha huh? system more than one more than one devices right at least in every house four or five devices are there ha huh? actively being used hmm? so if you are able to install antivirus software for your systems if you are ready to spend that 65 dollars per annum ha huh? sometimes 89 dollars ha huh? how much more have you have to protect your mind and your spirit and your soul because the evil spirits are always attacking people around you are always sowing negative seeds things around you are always swinging in a negative fashion so how much more should you install god's word and the anointing of the holy spirit in your life to protect yourself from all these attacks think about it think about it for as a man thinketh in his heart so is he don't forget you have to install the antivirus here the word of god hallelujah there should be a shield here 
that is god's word hallelujah we have received the spirit who is from god see that is what paul false statement is not the spirit that is in the world you should understand paul peter james john everyone they were doing ministry among the pagan people among the idol worshipers among the romans okay not just among the jewish people they had the same difficulty that we are facing you understand so that is why paul is differentiating not from the world not from the spirit that wanders in the world i have received the spirit from god the almighty one hallelujah there is nothing equivalent to the holy spirit my dear brothers and sisters one of the greatest blessings in my life is the anointing of the holy spirit hallelujah i treasure it hallelujah do you treasure it do you first of all earnestly desire it so please understand you have to start earnestly asking for the anointing of the holy spirit please please cry out cry out to god lord fill me Lord fill me with the anointing of the holy spirit that you gave to saint paul that you gave to saint peter on the day of pentecost that you breathed upon your disciples in the closed room do you understand that is how you have to cry nothing less lord nothing less than that the anointing that your disciples received my dear brothers and sisters god is calling us for such a life he is not just encouraging he is calling you commanding you to a life where you are protected completely by the divine one by the word and the holy spirit and where you become a blessing where you are not a wanderer here and there but you are a blessing so what should you do install the antivirus proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 above all else watch over your heart diligently guard it keep your heart with all vigilance keep your heart with all vigilance for from it flows the springs of life because from such a sincere heart and a pure heart comes the good holy spirit and the noble power of the holy spirit do you understand just think about it why are you asked to protect your heart and your mind and install the anointing of the holy spirit upon your life the software of god the holy spirit anointing because your heart is so important because your heart is not ha- not a heart it is a oasis of the holy spirit it is a spring of sa- salvation it is a spring of anointing do you understand the bible considers your heart as not a organ but a spring utr kannaga kartar paakrar it is not the heart is not for a heart specialist it might be an organ but for god it is not a organ it is a utr kann it is a spring from where life comes out so kill your earthly impulses because if you want this holy spirit to flow from your heart from this from this spring you have to start killing killer of impulses human impulses i did this because something pushed me i did this i know it is wrong but i did it that is an impulse earthly impulse that impulse has to be killed the earthly body the body the flesh will push you do you know that trigger you to immorality impurity passion evil desire and greed which amounts to idolatry colossians 3:5 says there are evil impulsions coming from the flesh flesh what did jesus say in john 6:63 your flesh is useless and this useless flesh is something a triggering point for all idolatry for all evil impulses for all evil desires for all immorality for all passion greed impurity you understand why it is it's useless for your spiritual life because it is, it is going to lead you push you in the wrong direction so kill make it dead therefore consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality 
you understand? Consider it as dead. Be crucified with Jesus Christ on the cross. It's very difficult. It's very difficult, uh, very easy to preach, but it's very difficult to follow. Do you understand? But only the Holy Spirit can help us in this area. Do you understand? Set your mind. First thing is kill. Kill all earthly impulses. Do you understand? Huh? Then, Colossians chapter, chapter 3 verse 2. Then set your mind on the things above. My dear brothers and sisters, think about it. Now your focus, your eyes have to turn not to the flesh, not to the immorality, not to the news channels, not to that man, this man, that pastor, this pastor. No! Set your, set your eyes, set your mind on the things above. 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 Not on earth anymore. Not on the men of God on earth, living on earth. No! Set your mind upon Jesus Christ. On the things above, not on the things that are on earth. You understand? Are you ready for that? Only then you will be able to kill earthly impulses, bodily impulses. If you are very, very all, see, whatever was, whatever the worldly man wants to achieve in his life, the very same ambitions a Christian is also having. What is the difference between you and others? Think about it. He wants to become a crorepati. You also want to become a crorepati. He wants to uh, get a luxury car. You also want to get a luxury car. He wants to build the greatest uh, house in his suburb or among his peers. And you also do want to do the same thing. Is that why Jesus died on the cross for you? Is that why Jesus uh, uh, wants to clean you, cleanse you with the blood of uh, with his holy blood to make you rich? Mighty? No. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. My dear brothers, until we start doing these things, okay, we are not going to overcome the problems of our life. You will always be stressed. You will always be running in your mind. You will always be in competition. Even when you are 71 years, retired man, you will still be comparing yourself with others. You will still be comparing your children with other children. Set your mind on the throne where Jesus is seated. Where the Father is seated. Where St. Paul, St. Peter are all worshipping God. Therefore, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 to 2. Therefore, since we have a great, so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Look at the things above. The holy men who have conquered this earthly life for Jesus Christ, who have won souls after souls after souls, hundreds and hundreds of souls, they brought to Jesus and they've died and they've gone as mighty witnesses in the heavenly realm. Think about them. Whoever is your, is, is, is a man of God who, who, who's in God's realm now, was taken up. Think about those witnesses. Let us also Lay aside every burden and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with the endurance, the race that is set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Do you understand? All secrets are given. The only way to overcome all these evil attacks upon your mind and live a life which is according to the life of life that Jesus taught to his disciples it is to better look at the heavenly realm, not at the earthly realm. Don't look at the stock market. Look at the Lord seated upon the throne. Who for fixing your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. He endured just looking at the joy that was kept for you and for me. At the end of it, the cross, he was able to liberate you and me. Despising the shame and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. That was the end. End destination of Jesus. Likewise, we have an end destination. That destination is not here in Sydney, not in India, not in somewhere else in earth. It's there. 
until unless you agree with this truth you will be a miserable christian do you understand if you want to be a joyful christian accept the truth written in the scripture simple become a child accept the truth as it is don't try to alter don't try to run with the with the worldly man because they have a worldly spirit you have the spirit of god in you am i right paul was a rich man a ship owner but he threw everything for christ peter was a fisherman he threw threw away the nets and the boat and came to jesus worldly speaking he was a failure fool but even now his name stands right a fisherman in peter's cathedral wherever whichever country whichever town whichever city you go there will be saint peter there will be saint paul you understand success is not about your riches not about your bank account where you work what you do for your living which car you drive which house which suburb you are living nonsense 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 set your eyes on jesus hallelujah until we start living such a life we'll be miserable people your thoughts needs protection your mind needs protection as a man thinketh so he is my dear brothers and sisters is the word of god liberating hmm is the word of god liberating if it is spoken in its truth it will liberate you it will liberate you it will not disappoint you it will not disappoint you if you have a true heart of following jesus christ but there were hundreds of jesus disciples who left him because he spoke the truth think about it 2000 years back they were there were such worldly people before in front of jesus that's why the word of god has its own challenges even in this generation 2000 years back also there were disciples who were worldly who ran away from jesus even now this gospel the truth is not appreciated am i right but there are very few people here who are accepting the truth as it is may god bless you